Here we are, back at it again. It is I, your host, hostess with the mostess. Let me introduce you to Bo Miles, a unique and likable guy. Everyday life, friends and family. Okay, so we finished up with the Dahmer, the Dahmer tapes, and I think the main, my main takeaway is people really, they really care about how people view them. We have to always remember that. You have to always remember that. No matter if you're a serial killer, no matter if you're a father of a serial killer or you're a mother of a serial killer or a brother or people just care how people, how the group, we care about how the group sees us and views us. Um, so that was my takeaway from there. All right, what do we got this week? Uh, wrapping up or just kind of reviewing we have a um, project that I'm working on, and now it's like, all right, I need to, now that the foundation is set, I have to, to be really tough on myself as far as as learning and a part of me just wishes that I, I can't blame it on, on anyone, right? Like my mentors that I had when I was younger, I can't really blame them and say, Hey, you, you didn't, you didn't coach me right. He wasn't really looking out for me. I can't say that because. I'm sure there are some conversations that was had that I'm just not remembering. But, or I could say since I do not remember those conversations, then here we are at this point where I feel like, I can't say that my, that my advisors or that people looking out for me let me down but I definitely feel like they let your boy down and like I said earlier I'm sure that they had conversations now the issue would be an issue of self worth and an issue of self confidence and I feel like in my early teens, I wasn't very confident in my ability. So now moving forward, I have to be ready whenever I get the chance to become the mentor. I have to be ready and identify Possible beliefs, disbeliefs in my young pupil. I don't have that as of now, but if that should ever come, I feel like, yo, I need to be ready because I have to be able to coach. Someone. You have to be. If if you're coaching. If you're not coaching, then then it doesn't matter. Right? But I, I had that I had that feeling 
because as I'm stepping into this programming arena, I just, I wish that I, this is the direction that I would have went. And I'm sure back when I was a young tyke, I knew or I felt like I knew what was right and what was best for me. But clearly I didn't. And we could say that everything happens for a reason and there's a reason for this and the seasons turn and turn. Right. We could say that. Um hindsight. But also hindsight is like no. And that's where taking responsibility for for my decisions, for my actions, I would have to say to pinpoint the problem. Definitely be a a problem of uh of deep subconscious low confidence. So on the surface, I I, I don't even know if, if I would have received that message because I'm sure I would have felt like no, I'm 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 uh, oozing with uh with self confidence. But but I I don't I don't believe so because I do remember. Feeling like, let's say, a a degree in engineering, or, or, let's say, even becoming a doctor, I, I didn't feel like I could do it, even though I had, I had people tell me I could do it. I don't feel like I believed that I could do it, let alone want. But certain things I know, even as a kid, I would have wanted. Right. So we're talking about programming and game design and programming language math engineering things like that but like i said when i think about my mentors i'm sure that that they tried so that's why i have to say that that my issue would have been okay i felt like i couldn't do those things I wasn't strong enough. Right, so, so that's that's that. We also, which I really usually I wouldn't speak on this type of stuff, but I feel that that it's a lesson. For me and others are speaking on it. And that's another reason why I don't want to speak or I usually don't speak on these type of things. And this is uh, current events. So I'm going to glaze over it quickly. It's only one issue in my take on. On small slice of that issue. So recently. uh, Kanye West got into a dispute or he got canceled over um, anti-Semitic speech. And just listening to the Lex Friedman podcast, which I highly recommend Lex Friedman to any of you guys, um, just pick an episode and see what you think, right? Find one of the, the people that, that he interviews and check it out and see if that's what you like. I like him and I, I, uh, I respect, I respect him. So I like the Joe Rogan interview. I like the RZA. I like the Donaher interview, uh, a few other programmers that he interviewed. I like them as well. So, Going into this interview, I knew, okay, I like Kanye and I like Lex. And in there, Lex makes the statement of, look, you can't just blame and generalize 
a group of people. And and I could understand that. Like I could I could see that that when Kanye is speaking and he's and he's telling his truth uh in business and in fashion, right? Like that he's experienced uh strong opposition and and uh exploitation and manipulation, but Lex is like, yo, but call out the individual, whoever that individual, whoever that person is that mistreated you and whoever that person is that exploited you or took advantage of you call them out but do but don't just say whatever quote-unquote illusional race that they're in whatever tribe that they belong to because because when it comes to exploitation and hurt and pain and People causing certain things. It's not a group of people that are doing this to you. It's individuals. Even if, even if it's five of them and they're all on the same team, they all know each other. Okay. Yes. That five. But as far as a, um, illusional race of people like, nah, that's not, that's not cool. And, and I agree with that. I agree with that 100% that, okay, if, if, um, four or seven or ten Jew Jewish people or ten black people or ten white people or ten Islamic people. It doesn't matter if you. But when the ten of them does something um, exploitive or hurtful to you, don't just think that. And say that it's those people, it's the Jewish people, it's the black people, the white people, the Spanish people. Like, no, it's not. <laughs> it's not. It's not. It's it's Jamal or it's Hector or it's um Weinstein, right? Or it's Johnson. So, so that, that resonated with me and that stuck with me. So that's as much as I'm going to get into as far as, uh, as far as that current event type of stuff. I mean, you guys are going to hear who not working with them anymore and who's not partnering with his companies. You you guys are going to, you guys are going to hear that. But, but what resonated with me the most, um, it would be like, yo, we, we can't just have an attack or a war on on a certain race or a certain group of people because certain individuals um did us wrong and hurt us which like i said i, I do think that that uh that people took advantage of kanye and that people are still taking advantage of kanye but it has nothing to do with with what race that they're a part of that's anyone would do this and you guys know that that's what i've said multiple times throughout multiple episodes is that anyone will do this. You have a group and you have power. Eventually someone is going to want more. Someone is going to want to exploit. If we, when we look at black American history, there were individuals, there were um, our white brothers who exploited the racism and that is something that is something that else that made me think just going through the Dahmer story like like I said looking at those pictures it it really made me think about the atrocities of slavery in a different way because we've always had and I'm talking about as human beings at some point, you just can't say we've always had serial killers because when you think of, um, when you think of, all right, if it's just three people, if it's just the first 10 people, I'm sure that there weren't a serial killer, but at some point just in the, in the algorithm of, of human population, it does happen. So, so whatever that is, 
that we don't know is it has been happening throughout the ages of time. So it's safe to say that during, um, during slavery of blacks in America, that there was some type of serial killer or serial rapist. Right. But ultimately there were people were black people were being taken advantage of to a level that we cannot even imagine. <clears throat> That is what I got from the Dahmer thing. And, and I don't believe that he was uh, specifically, he hated blacks and that's why he was doing. No, I don't believe that. I don't believe that at all. Um, he just went after whoever he could go after. So he got kicked out of these, um, what are they called? Bath houses or clearly those areas because his first few victims, I think is once he got, once he um, was established as a serial killer. So you figure, okay, he kills, um, kills a his first victim, I believe is a white boy. Then his second victim is white. And then he's drugging him. And then he get kicked out of those bathhouses. So then the only place he can go is the black community in those black gay bars. So, that's why he went, but he would have just stayed where I, he would have kept killing um, whoever. I mean, it, it didn't matter, right? So he, it, this is the environment that allowed that allowed him to do it. So I believe that, but but just looking at the just the the cruelty that I would say, like man, during. Um, during slavery, like yo, it will it 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 would have been times ten. Just whatever you wanted to do, it was gonna happen. If you just look at um, now you look at sex trafficking. Well, during slavery, that that would have been just legal, right? You would have just had. So right now we call it sex trafficking, human trafficking, but it just would have been a an umbrella it just would have been a part of slavery so um that's something else that that came to me but for this episode i really wanted to um to jump back into nine months and that's the that's the name of this episode and remember that's this is the episode that i lost so minus this 17 minute intro <laughs> But that's what I lost was that episode. And of course, I'm not going to say everything. And hopefully I can, I, I know that I'll make the main point, but it, it probably will never be as good as, as it was a few weeks ago. And that's okay. That's okay. Because the whole idea of nine months is process that everything takes a process. We have to be, aware of that that everything that is real in this world is a process so just the fact that we're saying nine months we know that humans in order to be born it takes roughly and we know that some people get here prematurely and they make it we know that some people Stay in a little bit longer. They they stay in uh, in God's purse just a little bit longer. Some people we know they 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 dip out of God's purse less than nine months, but for the most part, it takes about takes about nine months to be born. Now, even before that initial process of 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 the sperm entering into the egg there's still a process of of building up those sperm cells and then <clears throat> then it goes inside and even that is a lesson even there's a lesson in there but but before we get to that there's a process of the host of the male. So 
okay, the male is born, but he can't make a baby at two years old. He can't make a baby at four years old. So even that takes a process. It's a process of, of, of puberty that happens in the male. So the whole point is that everything takes a process. So, so your wants and your desires, they take a process. There's a process. And this is the reason that I've, I've moved. I'm not putting as much emphasis in Fiverr. Now I believe, I believe in Fiverr and I know, I know how to, to get the process moving. I know how to get the algorithm moving. I have an idea, right? So I don't know the same as I know my kid's face, right? I know my kid's voice. I don't know Fiverr that well, but I know them in the sense of, hey, you want to go to um, whatever the state is, university. I know roughly how that's going to be. A person says, well, I have my undergrad degree. I know roughly what that took to get the undergrad degree. Now, some degrees and some things are a little bit more intense than others. Maybe you're going to have more labs. Maybe you're going to have more papers. Maybe you're going to have to speak in front of more or perform in front of more, more times in front of more people. But certain things we can say, okay, this is going to be the same. <clears throat> That's how I know Fiverr. And remember, because we're talking about process, there's a process to get the algorithm going. So that process, let's say it's nine months, right? It's nine months to get that process going. Now, each creature has a different length of nine months. So our human nine months may, and we say a dog nine months may be three human months. So then we would say, oh, it only takes, it only takes a dog three months or a fly or a mosquito who has a lifespan. Some of them anyway, have a lifespan of 24 hours. Then their process may take um, a matter of seconds or, or a, a matter of minutes to get that process going. So we would say, all right, well, it takes, uh, nine mosquito months, but in human time, it's only uh, it's only two, three minutes. And then we have trees, which we would their nine months may take a human two years, or or um, a human's ten years, right? So, so time is relative to the creature, but. The fact that of the process is still the same. The process is still there. It still takes a process and it still takes time. So when we're talking about Fiverr, we know that, okay, it's going to take time. It's going to take time to get it moving. But then you have to weigh it versus, okay, now whose baby are you trying to have? Are you trying to have your baby or are you trying to have Fiverr's baby? Because it's going to take the same amount of time. It's going to take nine months. Whether you whether you produce your baby or you produce someone else's baby, it's going to take nine months. If we think about a job, okay, I'm going to go get a job, which that's what I'm uh, doing now. I'm looking for um, to supplement my income. So there's a process. And we could say, all right, there's a nine months process. Even though it's only going to take, let's say it takes a day or it takes um, a week, but it's still the same process, still a process. And that's my whole point with the nine months. Now, if we go jump back into the sperm, when the sperm enters in, it knows that it's going somewhere. Now, it hasn't been there before. 
something that's calling it. We don't know if it's uh, if it's some type of hormone. We don't know if it's some type of sugar. We don't know what it is, but something is calling all of those cells to it. That's why all of these things are going. You have a million, a million of them going, all going in the, in the, in the same direction, all going for something that it does not know why. It doesn't know. It hasn't been there before. But it has to travel up this this canal. It has to travel in this foreign land. Somewhere that has never been. But something is pulling it to it. Something saying, yo, you have to be here. And I'm sure that you can identify with that. I know that I can. There's so many things that that I feel like pulling me it's pulling me to it we could say it's our wants it's our desires there's a there's a pull that is happening and just like that cell maybe you've never been there before so so you 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 don't know exactly what it looks like you don't know where 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 you're going in a sense but but trust that you do know where that there's a force that that is above you that knows where where you're going. The that cell doesn't know that. Look, I'm going to this. I mean, just imagine just how small that is. And when we when we look at the scale, I'm not really sure how accurate the human scale of it is, but it would be. Like a like a human going to the moon, and once you once you land and, and you finally, but you know it's not even just landing on it; it has to get inside. And once it gets inside, boom! Now, now that process begins, right? So, when one when one journey ends, another process begins. I mean, that that alone is powerful. As we are moving throughout this life and moving throughout this world, one one thing will end and another will begin. Whether it's relationships, whether it's family, whether it's friends, whether it's a job, but we're all moving towards something. We just don't know what it is. Even in the vacuum of space, space is moving towards something. It's moving, we could say that it's moving away from something. It doesn't really matter how you describe it, but it is moving from where it was. And when all of these things move together, it creates the illusion of static. It creates a static illusion. Ah, everything's the same. Well, everything is moving. So just know that there is something inside of you. There's something greater than you that is pulling you towards it. Now, just like those cells that enter in, there's so many. There's billions of them. So we know that only one, and I believe sometimes Two. I'm not really sure of the of the modern science on it. As far as what do we believe? Do we believe that that two um, sperm cells enter in the egg at the same time and it produces um, maternal? I believe it's. I'm not really sure if that's what we believe or if we believe that one. I know that. Um, that we as modern people when we do uh in vitro vitro I do know that we fraternal oh so, fraternal twins all the fertilization 
fertilization of two separate eggs with two different sperms during the same pregnancy. See, they share half their genomes just like any other siblings. So let's see. Three type of twins. That we know conjoined, identical, and then fraternal. But the modern science, whatever, you know, I'm not really sure about the modern take if um if that happens naturally or if that's only through in vitro where they put in two different eggs they put in some sperm cells and they join them together and they just put them into the woman and then they just wait and see if it's going to um, take and I know most of the time they'll put in multiples because they're not sure how many will take and then once they get let's say because remember Octomom he had, I want to say it was eight, right? But I'm not sure if she was pregnant with eight of them at the same time, but it, there could have been. It could have been eight babies in there. So normally what they would do is um, they would say, okay, we put in we put in eight, but if, let's say, all eight of them, just like her in her case, which I'm not really sure how that went, but I do know that they'll come to you and say like, Hey, um, seems like all eight of them are, are, um, hanging in there. You know what you want to do? <laughs> and then the person, because I know right now the, the topic and just everything is about abortion. So I know that that's, um, that's grim reality of reality, especially as we're talking about having, eight to however many and we know that in nature like that's a human is not going to give birth to eight they the mom and all of them would die you know that so but moving away from that and just speaking on process once that sperm cell gets inside get, leaves from its base and goes into a foreign land to the unknown we can say once it's in the unknown there's still something that is guiding it right and that thing is guiding you too that thing is guiding me as well and and we don't understand it we don't understand and something that I realized is that <clears throat> maybe we are becoming or in Maybe that we are now four dimensional creatures that all of us are, but this is just the first, like we're because we're not truly aware of what it is. We haven't really labeled it and, and gave it an official feeling or official term official labeling we just call it a sixth sense we call it oh when you think about a person then that person calls or you and it usually happens like that right and i spoke about this where it's something beyond us right that beyond that that fourth dimension which which we we can't have a sense in it right now, even though, like I said, we might be, we might be the first evolutionary fourth dimension creature. So because we're the first, then what they say, um, frontiers or visionaries get filled with arrows. There's a, I think it's a frontier, but there's a term when, when the, when the Americans started to venture out west. So that first wave, the whole idea is that they, they're the ones who get filled with arrows. They're, the, they're the ones who take the, the, the most damage or 
for the sacrifice. They are the ones who are sacrificed. But it's only through their sacrifice that we can have what we have now. So that could be it. I'm not sure. Like, I don't know. But I do know that everyone has this sense. Everyone can sense things that are beyond themselves. Just like that cell into the unknown. So. That's where we have reassurance. So if we look at, like I was saying, with the whole, um, with the process, we look at the process of Fiverr. We have multiple processes to get the ball rolling, right? So one thing that I, one thing that I do know is that you have to always be cooking. This is the ABCs of of whatever always be cooking what does that mean that in sales it would be always be selling always knocking on doors always calling because i remember working in sales i had in studying studying sales studying marketing studying all of these things and I remember my job uh, at Macmillan Research. It was a telemarketing job. And it, it had a auto dialer. So you get on there, you have a seat. And I, I remember even getting a job, right? So you, remember, we're talking about process. So even to get the job... You had to, I think you had to type like 60 words. You had to type 60 words a minute. Or no, you didn't have to type 60. I think you had to type 30. So you had to type 30 words a minute. And I was practicing. I remember when when I finally locked in, I was uh, up to maybe 61 or 87 words a minute at the, at my height. That was the fastest, the fastest that I could type. And I remember applying for the job you went down there and they give you this passage so after you you fill out the application then you you had to take a typing test and um you know i took the typing test and i I got the job and then you have your orientation i believe that you even sat and listened on somebody's so you had a worker and you just listen to them. And you, so you put on the headset and you just look, you just shadow them. But eventually it's going to be your day. So I remember just feeling nervous and feeling anxious. This is going to be my first day by myself. What am I going to do? And put on the headset. Breathe, right? You're nervous. Your heart is pumping uh palms are sweaty nervous mom spaghetti okay you out there you out here but the words don't come out do 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 like oh and you get that first i want to say that sometimes you gotta um an answering machine so you got an answering machine and you felt good oh man Ooh, let's just let's ride it out let this thing uh let this let this thing go ahead and and make it to where it's going but, and then we'll hang up and get back out there do 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 some sometimes and uh and then eventually you get your first call and you go into your script, right? Because you read this script over and over and over again. And it's in front of you as well. So it's not like you have to memorize it. But eventually you do memorize it. And, and I haven't said it in so long, so I, I don't remember it. But I know that it was something like, you know, hey, this is Bo Miles from Macmillan Research. So I want to say that that's how it started off. right? Hey, this is Patser at Macmillan Research. 
uh, we're calling today, la, 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 blah, blah, blah. But, but they had a whole script. And remember, we're talking about process. So they've identified a selling process that worked. They identified a script that you read so that you had the words, you had the whole introduction. It's been tested. They, they've had, they probably have hundreds of employees reading and testing out the script. So they know the conversion rate of the script. They know the conversion rate. So boom, I sit down, <clears throat> I'm reading the script and like I said, that first call, I mean, you're nervous and you probably hear, uh, no, I'm not interested. Thank you. Have a good day. And you're like, oh, and you jump back in there, <clears throat> go into the script again. Oh, I'm not interested. And I want to say maybe let's say out of 10, out of 10 or 20 calls or whatever, you'll get someone who is interested. And I remember. After a while, I would, because you're not afraid anymore. You're not afraid. It's, there's there's no longer that unknown anymore. At some point, it's not an unknown. You know what it is. Okay, this is research. We're, we're jumping in there head first, cock first. Okay, we're jumping in there. Hey, and the... Uh, I would I would get bored because you're there for hours. You're probably there. I would say you're there for maybe six, four to six hours, I want to say. Because I was in school. This was my first job in college. So you're in there and you're kind of bored. So what I would do is I would come up with different names and, and different personas that I would be. So I would um <clears throat> I would hit them like, hello. This is Michael Jackson calling for from Macmillan Research. And and I remember I was doing a voice and uh, the guy was like, like Michael, like the Michael Jackson. And I was like, I was like, uh, no, I was like, no, hey, Michael Jackson. Right. So I'm putting, I'm doing, I'm trying to do the Michael Jackson voice. And I said that my name is Michael Jackson. And uh, he was like, oh, is this the Michael? You could just hear the excitement in his in his voice. Like, yo, this is Michael Jackson that I'm talking to. <laughs> and I remember, so I remember doing that. And then you would do, uh, I was like, and this is Davy Jones calling from Macmillan Research. And, <laughs> so you come up with all these different characters and uh, all these different voices. And those are the two that uh, stand out the most, but um, but I'm sure I was using all different types of uh, voices. I'm sure that I even did a, a Schwarzenegger or or um, a Rocky or whoever, right? Uh, I'm sure I did Mick. So the whole idea that's that's what I used to to get me through the boredom after a while, but but that taught me to always be searching the process. We're talking about the process of, of success. And that's really what we're saying. And you can have success in these different things. You can have success wherever you want. And that, that process is still going to be the same. So we got always be calling always be cooking. So in Macmillan, when I did that telemarketing, it just showed me like, yo, got to be calling all the time. And we know, well, you get, some of you may know, but as far as, uh, for sales, you want to always be calling, always calling because each client is a potential client is a potential customer. Each each person you call is a potential customer. And you make those and you get your you get your rate, you get your numbers. OK, if I make uh, if I call for an hour, <clears throat> I'm bound to get one person that is interested in what what it is that I am doing. I'm bound to get one person. So now when we jump back. So we jump back to the Fiverr. We know what it takes to be successful. 
where are my potential customers, my potential clients? It's going to be YouTube. It's going to be YouTube. YouTube is nothing but videos and thumbnails. So if my first product is thumbnails, I know that YouTube uses thumbnails. Facebook uses thumbnails. Those are going to be my biggest things. So I'm going to focus on YouTube. So if we're using the always be calling method, then every video is a potential customer. Every channel. So if they have, if they have a million, they have a million channels. So then that's a million potential customers. So, and the good thing about YouTube is that you don't have to talk to them. You can just copy and paste. You can just copy and paste. I could I could easily just come write a script, a small a small script and in every channel that I go to, I can pick a niche, pick a market. Um computer I would pick somewhere where people are it really doesn't matter. But let's say we pick technology, we pick uh, phones, we pick computers, something. It doesn't matter what, what market we pick. We pick hip hop, we pick country, we pick. Uh, we just go to, we could just go and let's do this right now. Open up a browser. It there and then we want a private browser. And how do you do that? Maybe you gotta. All right, so right click, open new private window. All right, then we type in YouTube. Now <clears throat> it's going to. <clears throat> Take us to where, where you're not, you're just seeing what's popular. So the first video has 1.2 million. The second video is spend the night in cozy coffee shop ambiance. So this is like a music and it's 11 hours. So they only have 8,000 views, but then the next, another video is, um, Four million. Then we got one point six million, almost a million. One point three million. We have six thousand watching. We have ten million. So, so we can just we can just go to one. <clears throat> then we have trending uh, topics. The guy from Will and Grace, uh, Leslie Jordan. So he just recently passed away. So you have that. You have here. The new iPad is weird. Uh, Marquise Brownie. So we go to him. Go to him. Click on his channel. So he has uh, an intro video. We just go to videos. He has 16 million subscribers. His new latest video released 18 hours ago. So... We're going to go ahead and click on it and then we're going to turn it down. We have, um, we have people advertising. So this is the first we're identifying. Okay. Who are our potential customers? The people who are trying to sell by advertising are potential customers. These are people who spend money on YouTube. These are people who spend money on YouTube. So we know that that they they spend money. <laughs> right? Then on the side we have related content. They this is gonna be related to um to this video that we're watching. It had it was released eighteen hours ago. 
It has 2.4 million views. So now we can say, all right, what's on the uh, recommended videos as well? So we have all of these different, all of these different videos. We have tech videos. We have EQ. We have all of this, right? But what we're seeing are potential customers. We see that this guy right here, um, Mr. Who's the Boss, he has um, 7.2 million views. He's a potential customer, even this guy that we're on. Marquise or Marquez Brownie. He's a potential customer. We could we could just type right here in the comments. Remember, we came up with a little small script. He has nine. He has a uh, nine thousand comments. We could just click on the people here and see if they have. So look, let's just check this first one. This from Reese Baby. Uh, Basie. He has 15 subscribers. One video four years ago. Fortnite video. So he's not he's not going to do right. He's not more of a potential customer for us because he's not in it. Right. He could even be a troll. But this guy right here, Lee Richards. This is he has one subscriber. He has. One, two, three, four, five. He has five videos, all from five years, two from five years ago, three from four years ago. So we don't know if he gave up, gave up with uh, making videos. He gave up YouTube, right? So his, his videos four years ago and it could just be a different channel he could have a different channel by now but now we're just searching here um this guy has a check mark we know that he's in the game okay yeah look at that there we go he has a um he has an intro video he has 27 oh this guy has 270,000 subscribers uh, let's go to the about. He has a um, hundred million views. Videos. I mean, he has a bunch of videos, right? So here, boom, this is a potential customer. So now that we've already developed that script, he has a bunch of shorts all a year, a year, 10 months, nine months, nine months, eight months. Four. So yeah, he's he's pretty active. I mean, he looks like he makes a few videos, maybe a few videos a week. So we got two days ago, he did the Batman. Um, these two games are seven years apart. <clears throat> so he's doing Gotham Knights and watching um, the other one. Then he does Water Physics. So two days, four days, eight days, 11 days. 13, four weeks ago. So, one month, one. So he's, he's fairly active, right? Two months. So he, he's fairly, he's fairly active. We could say that he's probably pushing on maybe three to four videos a week. Three. So yeah, about, you could say about three to four videos a week. So this is a potential, this is a potential customer for us right here, right now, right? The process. So we know the process. And the only thing, the easy part about this compared to Macmillan and even beyond Macmillan, we'll even go into uh, uh, stories beyond Macmillan, right? But what we've learned is that with Macmillan, it was you had to get on the phone and you had to actually talk to people. So that whatever that anxiety, some people will have the anxiety and that fear. Um, but you don't even need that. You don't even need to get on the phone and speak with people. You don't even need to do that. Now you can just 
copy and paste control C, control V, and then move to the next. Control C, control V. You can go to Instagram, control C, control V, or um, just hold your finger, hold your finger, copy all, select all, copy, go to each person and then boom, control V, uh, hold your finger, paste, hold your finger, paste, go and just pick a niche, control, paste, control, paste, control, or hold your finger, paste, hold your finger, paste, hold your finger, paste. So always be cooking. That process is the same. It's the same. And, and that would be the process if we're talking about what it would take a fiver. That's the process to, to get that going, to get, all right, we, we, we got to get on these thumbnails. We got to get on these videos. We got to get on whatever, however you, whatever, um, whatever service that you're offering, you want to get in front of people. You want to always be knocking, always be calling, always be cooking. That's the process. And the more and more you do it, eventually you'll start to get customers. Now we speak on, before uh, we jump back into the reality, oh, there goes gravity, do, do, right? Do we, before we jump back into mom's spaghetti, we have to speak on, there was a, a magazine company that I worked for. That was sales. That was the sales job. And I had to call for new leads. Now, um, it started off and uh, I was working for uh for a friend. He he gave me a couple leads, like, hey, here's um <clears throat> here's a lead, here's a lead here, and here's a lead there. All right, this is a lead that I was working on, but you can you can go ahead and get that lead. So we have that. Now you have to generate new leads. And you just hop, look, you just hop on the phone. So what I would do is identify, I would take time to identify businesses, identify who I would like to call, come up with the list, get their name, get their numbers, write that on a separate sheet of paper, and then go down there and just mark it off. And look, I, so between these hours, I'm going to be calling um, businesses. And so this is just, uh, this is the process of, of developing leads. And you do this for 30 days, then you'll start to reap the rewards. So eventually, like, whatever that number is. So let's say it's 60 days. Let's say it's 90 days. So, but if you consistently call, you're consistently calling businesses and calling companies, trying to, to get them to, hey, you know, do you want to be in this magazine? We can do a write-up. We can do this. We can do that. You're doing that for however, it doesn't matter how long it takes for um get through the slush, right? We're talking about a process. So now I want you guys to think about for this um, illustration, in your mind, I want you to think of turning on the water faucet and the water coming from outside of the house. And once you turn it on, it has to go up all of these different pipes, has to go along this journey, and then eventually, boom, it comes out of your sink. Eventually, boom, it spits out. So when you call, it's like it's like that water that's traveling traveling up those pipes and going navigating through all of the different pipes and doing everything that it has to do so if it takes you a month before you get that first call before you get that first um before you get to close and capitalize on those leads then you know that you have a month of calling a month so if it's three months, then that means that, okay, your first three months, you're going to see a small amount of, of, um, conversion, but then your second three, like even really, even after that, um, even that next month. So 
it takes you three months before the water starts to flow. That fourth month, the water's flowing. The fifth month, the water's flowing. The sixth month, the water's flowing, right? You have three months worth of back. So if you just stop right then and there, eventually it's going to dry out because you stopped. So remember, we're just talking about process. And just know that everything has a process. If everything in this realm of reality, this physical, you can touch it, you can see it, you can taste it and smell it. You can look at mom's spaghetti, taste mom's spaghetti, you can hear mom's spaghetti. There's a process in order for it to even materialize. So jumping back with Fiverr, we noted that we know that there's a process. Now we have to go back again to when I said, okay, whose baby are you trying to, to develop? Whose baby are you trying to give birth to? And ultimately it's like, yo, I want to give birth to my baby. Right? Like, yo, I don't want to give birth to Fiverr's baby. Because it takes nine months regardless. So if it's going to take me, and remember, that's subjective. Time is subjective, so it might take me nine mosquito months, right? It might take me um, nine dog months. But it's going to take that process. So now we're talking about, okay, now what's the process on you developing your baby? What's, what is that process? All right, so I have to learn how to code. I have to learn this. I have to learn that. And in today's in today's world, you, you don't have to be that proficient. That's a good thing. Now, normally, if this was the 90s, um, like, yo, it's going to take you, <laughs> it might take you uh, nine whale months. Like, oh, because I think it's taking a whale like two years. They, I think that they're pregnant for two years. Um, a humpback whale. I want to say that a humpback whale is um is pregnant for two years or you know, what larger creatures are pregnant longer. So it could be a could be the humpback whale, it could be um an elephant, right? But those type of creatures are, are pregnant longer. It takes a longer time. So what is it going to take to get your project going? And, and this isn't this isn't me trying to get you guys to do your own thing. If that's if that's what is if that's what's calling you, then obey the call, right? Um, if you choose to, because you don't have to. But for those of us who feel like I I can't get away from the call, like that sperm cell that's in the unknown, something is calling it, right? Something is calling it. So so if something is calling you in your life, and you feel like yo. I, not, I'm not doing my calling. I'm not being what it is I'm supposed to be. Just know that that there that it is a process. Just know that, and just know that. Okay, even though you think you don't know the steps and you don't know how to get there, the sperm cell shows us and teaches us that. That there's a force greater than you that knows how to get there. And if you trust and just keep going towards and keep going towards what you believe is right, just trust in that force and you will reach the egg. And the process and the and the new process will begin. So um that's that. Like I said, I don't I don't know. I don't believe that this is better than the last episode. But the message is still the same that everything is a process. And when we look at the five, when we look at my personal choice to, okay, boom, we're going to get this fiver thing going. And then looking at it and looking at the process and saying like, yo, I mean, I, yo, man, if, it, if, if it's going to take me nine months to develop this, it's going to take me nine months to, to develop my thing. I might as well just develop my thing. Okay, it's going to take me nine months. I know that. But at the end, I'm going to reap far greater reward. 
and I'm going to have because let's say the fiber is only to to get me to the point where I can do my thing. So now we're just stepping back to go forward like a little small rubber band. But it takes you look, it's going to take you time and a process to develop fiber. And then once uh, who knows that that might take you a year, two, three years. What I'm seeing. A, a certain pattern that I'm seeing is um, it's usually. Six years. Six human years. Like five to six years. And, and yeah, you'll see people they're like, oh. and, and I know how to, you know, I know how to get around, I know how to jumpstart things and jumpstart algorithms. Like, I understand that. That's not the issue. But, like, I, I want to do business. I just want to do honest business. I don't want to trick people. I don't want to lie to people. I Look, this is what it is. <laughs> this is my book, right? This is. If you're interested in uh, video games and fighting games, if you're interested in uh, just looking at things different and hearing different perspectives, and diff if you're interested in uh, listening to other ways that people think about fighting games, well, here is my book. Like, like that is the truth. I, I don't want to trick you. I don't want to. Hey, if you if you want to win. Uh, 39 championships like Anakin and I go pay Anakin just to say that he read my book. I don't want to do that. I, I just don't want to do that. Now, is there, is that a way that some people do it? Yeah. And in, in different products. Yes. Yes. There, there's a way, right? That, that is one path. That is one opportunity. Um, but I look, I don't, I don't want to do that. I want to be honest. I want to, just run an honest business. So it's going to take a process. If I'm here doing Fiverr, it's going to take a process. It's going to take, could take me two to three years to get to a point <clears throat> to where I'm having a uh, business and clients enough to sustain myself to where I, that this is all that I do is Fiverr. And then I can start focusing on other things, right? It may take me, Two to six years. But then I got to jump on. My process. Right. So it's like look. Well you might as well just go ahead. Because if it's going to take you. Nine months to develop. Fiverr is going to take you nine months to develop. What you want to do. Just go ahead and, and. Spend the nine months on developing what you want. So. So as we come full circle. Everything. Everything. In this world is a process. No matter what you can look at. Just open your eyes and look around. You're going to see an idea. Someone had an idea. When you look around your home. Your environment. Just the world as you're out here. You're looking at ideas. And you're looking at a process. You're looking at the end result of a process. And just know. That that the same energy. And the same force. That. That. Um, led that idea to reality will lead your ideas to reality as well. But with that being said, I love you guys and uh Reese's p p p p p c c c c c Be Halloween cocksuckers. <laughs>